So uh, the topic of today's discussion is uh, lucid waking. And uh, it kind of takes off on the phrase of lucid dreaming. And I think most of us have likely heard about lucid dreaming, uh, a little bit of a kind of Wikipedia definition. Uh, a lucid dream is a dream during which the dreamers, while dreaming, are aware they are dreaming. Right? So I think kind of heard it. So while you're dreaming, kind of aware that you're dreaming, and uh, likely all of us have had this happen. You know, we've had many dreams, right? Many days we've been alive, many nights we've uh, slept. And where we said, oh, this is a dream. I need to get out of this. Or this is a dream, something else going on. Very often, usually, it's like, I have to get out of this, right? And we kind of uh, uh, become aware. But there is the capability that some people uh, have demonstrated uh, to be able to be in a dream and manage it uh, and so on. Uh, what what uh, interest us here is looking at the notion of lucid waking, right? So let's say we think it's potentially wonderful to be aware when we're dreaming, but in a sense, uh, uh, we are dreaming now. We are in a state of, of kind of limited awareness, and is it possible to bring ourselves to a state of greater awareness is really what our aim is. So recall, uh, if we're going to give a kind of uh, uh, you know, freehand, freeform definition of lucid waking. Uh, and I would say it's not just to live life, but to be aware of the context of our existence. Right. Uh, you could say lucid waking is to realize during our waking life that we are part of a divine reality. And to realize we are never outside of the awareness and care of God because we are part of it. So I just kind of review that again, and I'm sure there are many ways to add to this definition. But first, not just to live life, but to be aware of the context of our existence. Lucid waking is to realize during our waking life that we are part of a divine reality and to realize we are never outside of the awareness and care of God, because we are part of it. So what might be meant by not just to live life, but to be aware of the context of our existence? Uh, a little bit of the second phrase is attempting to define that. It's to, during our waking life, to be aware that we are part of a divine reality. It's to it's what the psychology they call metacognition to be able to step out of uh, what is going on, so to speak, and to see it from a kind of more inclusive and encompassing perspective. And that encompassing and uh, larger perspective is to realize that we are part of a divine reality. Right. Uh, there's a wonderful quote from Louis-Claude de Saint-Martin. He said, if at death we realize that this life is an illusion, why do we treat it differently now? The nature of things does not change. Again, he said, if at death we realize that this life is an illusion, why do we treat it differently now? The nature of things does not change. So it's about waking up and realizing as we go about our daily life, walk down the street, that we are part of this greater cosmic drama, this greater cosmic reality. An example is, as you're walking down the street to realize that you are on this planet Earth, which is rotating on its axis and revolving around the sun, and at the same time hurtling through space, even as we walk down the street. In many ways, uh, because of the sky and the color of the sky, it hides from us and the limitations of our eyesight, the realization that we are part in a much larger cosmic existence at every moment of our lives. Humans also have a kind of uh, 
peculiar uh, aspect to our experience. And you can kind of look at it if we compare ourselves to animals. Well, let's say other animals. So animals don't know why they're here, right? Uh, you can see a deer running through a field or a squirrel and they just live. Right? They're looking to eat, to mate, to avoid being eaten without any context of why they're here. How did they get here? What's this all about? Right? They are just living their lives. They are conscious, but they're not necessarily self-conscious. Right? They respond to the stimuli in their environments, but they're not in a uh, condition which allows them to uh, reflect more greatly on their existence. Now humans, we could say by contrast, have greater potential, but if we really look at human or humanity, humanity and humans don't know the source of their own being or existence. Right. So, it is as if psychologically we have sprung from nowhere. We don't know where we came from. We don't know how this got going. All we know is, wow, I'm out here and I experience certain things. And I'm experiencing certain things. Now, many people uh, will turn to a sacred scripture of the particular faith, perhaps that their parents uh, uh, were part of or are part of, for an origin story. Here's where you came from. And we know there are many different origin stories. Others believe that human existence simply is the result of a set of totally random events that produce them. So here we have almost 8 billion people going around the planet and not knowing at all from whence we sprang. What is our origin? Where is the source of our being? We just know we're out here. Not entirely different than the deer running through the field. We're going through our actions, trying to protect ourselves, feed ourselves, create communion with others, all of those actions that seem to give us comfort, but without real context or evidence. What is different between animals and humans is that humans have the potential to know why they're here. Our consciousness is evolved, or its expression is evolved to the extent that can enable us to actually come in contact with the source of our being. In many ways, I'd say humanity is just beginning to lift our heads up beyond the instinctual, which is what animals live by, and the rational or reasoning life, which we've kind of come to adopt uh, over the number of centuries. So we move beyond the instinctual, instinctual and then to a rational life, but we are really just beginning to lift our heads beyond those onto the mystical life. To really look, to go to the greater mysteries of life as they are generally referred to, uh, to seek out and consider the source of our being. Most cases, we are actually insensitive to those questions. We go through our life until we are faced with the prospect of death, as if those, that question did not exist in most cases, most of humanity, most of the time. So in that way, one could refer to it as we are asleep. We're not really awake in this life we are. We are only semi-conscious. For me, an example of those moments of waking up is when I'm out in a dark secluded area outside of the city on a clear night and see the hundreds and reality thousands of stars in the sky and it takes my breath away. That's when I've awakened for a moment to realize that I am in the cosmic, I am in something vast and eternal without necessarily answers at my fingertips, but I'm about something more than who's gonna win the NBA finals or who's gonna be elected or not elected president in this country or some other country or what I might uh, have for dinner tomorrow. So those moments when we 
find something, perhaps out in nature. For me, I think sometimes for others, perhaps the beauty and majesty of, of the starlit night. But it could be another natural scene, a mountain vista, or even of the ocean, or a sunset. That reminds us for a moment that we are experiencing something bigger than our everyday concerns of life. And that's the moment we have awakened. What's so interesting about it is that it takes our breath away. It overwhelms us. It frightens us because it takes and forces us for a moment to go beyond the comfort of being semi-conscious, of just going through life. But how do we get uh, to this, to move from being conscious to being self-conscious and ultimately toward cosmic consciousness? How do we awaken within the dream of reality? So that is our goal to kind of have, to come to, to be awake, to realize that we are part of a cosmic experience at all times. So the different levels of being awake and to present a few ideas of describing them. So one we could say is being mindful of the existence of God. Right? When we are mindful of the existence of God, we have already added to a reality that exists that our everyday ordinary reality does not attend to. We can go further and become mindful of existing within God. That we exist, we have all of these experiences within the consciousness and being of God. You say there is one consciousness all being and consciousness is one and united. And we come to realize and appreciate that we are existing in this consciousness of God. In the words of St. Luke, it is in that which we live, move, and have our being. It is that which in we live, move, and have our being. So we can come to that awareness and remind ourselves of that. And we can also come to where we become mindful that our consciousness is part of God. Our Rosicrucian teachings tell us from the very outset that there is only one consciousness. It is the cosmic consciousness. And all things, animate and inanimate, participate in that consciousness. There's nothing devoid of consciousness. It's down to the molecules that brings things together, uh, to the awareness that we have and that we share with all the living uh, animate things around us. So we can become mindful that our consciousness is part of God. And then obviously we can be mindful that all is God. And that's the experience when you read accounts of those who momentarily or in a more sustained way have the realization of cosmic consciousness, realize that this cosmic consciousness, this God, this intelligence is, is everything that exists. There is nothing outside of God, nothing outside of the infinity of God. So we can look at being awake to, in each of those states, being mindful of the existence of God. Right? There's a starting point that we can all cultivate, and it really is the road of mysticism. We can become mindful of existing in God. So at all times, we are in that presence. If you go back to the Jewish scriptures, uh, where the Psalm that refers to, where can I go where thou art with me? Well, I go to the deepest points in the ocean or the highest points of the mountaintops, thou art there. Or again, in the words of St. Luke, it is that which we live, move and have our being. We become mindful that our consciousness is part of God and that is our connection. We are all connected to this one consciousness because we are an extension of that expression of this consciousness. Then ultimately, perhaps when we get and see that vision from that mountaintop, to be mindful, to be awake that all is God. So we want to wake up while we're here. We do not want to just go through the activities of life, the ins and outs of everyday mundane life, without realizing what we're really part of. 
to peel back the sky and see the eternity that we're surrounded by and the eternity that we're part of. But at the same time, to be able to realize the intimacy of being able to touch this great force that governs the entirety of this universe and all that we experience. And that really is as above, so below. In many ways, and this is kind of what our grandmasters referred to, we say humans are still seedlings on our journey of growth. Right? We're journeying from conscious to self-conscious and ultimately to cosmic consciousness. But even then, let us imagine that there are many levels of higher consciousness. We are just waking up. We are just going from the asleep, just going through life like a squirrel, an animal, kind of pursuing those basic material things. We are just waking up to realize we are truly part of something great and divine. So this is a, uh, one of the great sayings, perhaps, that was left to us by, by Descartes was the expression cogito ergo sum. Right. I think, therefore I am. And this is an exercise we'd like to do where let us reflect not on the, uh, the pieces of our lives, but let us reflect on our being, that we exist, and not again on the details. What are we doing today or tomorrow? Or what does this mean? Those are irrelevant, they will change, they are transitory. The permanent and immortal, the eternal, uh, is our being. That's part of the divine being. The rest are just things that pass by on the screen. So we're gonna do this brief exercise, a little exercise, and I'm gonna ask you to do is, with your eyes open, I'm gonna do a little screen share here, uh, which should hopefully put on our screens. Let me see that didn't quite, let me get that done here. Uh, uh, I'm going to do a screen here and uh, what I'm going to ask you to do is during this exercise uh, is look at the screen but you can look at something else uh, and to repeat simply to yourself I am and have that phrase dominate your consciousness nothing else but that I am not I am this, I'm Julian, I'm Tom, I'm a man, I'm a woman, any of that. I'm an American, I'm a Cuban, I'm a whomever, but simply I am. So let's do that. Let's do that with the same sense of awe that we might find if we were encountering that great starry night. So I'm gonna do a screen share. Forgive me if uh, it looks a little messy, but I think I'll let's see, did that happen? All right. I hope it happened, okay. Everyone, can I get a thumbs up if the screen share has worked? Thank you. So we're gonna do this. And uh, again, I'm just gonna ask you to concentrate on these images and just repeating to yourself, I am. Let that thought be your only preoccupation.
Now let us look for a few moments and think about ways that we can practice these various states of being awake, how we can help attract those uh, states to ourselves and exercise that in our consciousness. So one way that uh, personally I find very helpful is the first thing upon waking is looking at the Rosicrucian morning prayer. Kind of an abbreviated version that I use. Uh, you know, God of my heart, God of my realization, thank you for the return of consciousness and the privilege of serving one more day in the fulfillment of thy decrees and for the continuing evolution of the personality of my soul upon this plane of existence. So I center myself and my day and my existence in the next 18 waking hours right, is that's what I'm doing. That's what this is about. And I try to bring myself back to that as frequently as possible during the course of the day. Something else I find found helpful and just recommend is read books on near-death experiences and reincarnation to reinforce this reality to reinforce and remind you what we're talking about here is the factual reality, not the reality that we're blind to really, or that we so blindly only see, but the factual reality that we are in the midst of a cosmic drama, we're experiencing it, we will be born again, but we are in the midst of this drama and understanding uh, what life is about therefore. Use triggers during the day to remind yourself of the high dimensions of your existence. Right? Recalling the night sky filled with stars or whatever it might be that will remind you during the day. It could be coming back again to the morning prayer, but whatever reminds you that you are participating in this cosmic experience aimed at the evolution of, the, of your soul personality. And that's why you're here. And that's what life is about. Remind yourself throughout the day, every day until it becomes an ongoing perception of reality. Right? That's what the kind of practice will do. So even as you are watching the news on CNN, you are aware that everything you hear of and experience is taking place in the consciousness of God, is part of the divine reality. Everything, no exceptions, everything, everything that you experience. Now, when the words of Jesus or the advice of Jesus it will allow you to be in the world, but not necessarily of the world, but we will be in the world as we are. But we will realize at all times that the drama we see unfolding, which will become very apparent to us at the moment of our death or the transition, that it, its significance is but this drama for our own evolution and the evolution of humanity and the evolution of human things, of living things. And so commune throughout the day with the God of your heart, the God of your realization. And for those of you who, uh, receive uh, the emails with Rosicrucian Reflections. It was a very applicable one this past week to this thought. And it, in some ways, is maybe one of the most profound thoughts and valuable thoughts for us as Rosicrucian students and, and students of mysticism. And I, I, I've just edited it for a time of sorts, a tiny bit, but you could see it if you just kind of look through your email for maybe it was Thursday. And it's H. Spencer Lewis who wrote, he said, the Rosicrucian realizes that at any moment, at any time of day, we can turn our thoughts inward and immediately contact the mind and consciousness of God. God is not reached by turning our thoughts outward to some point in the heavens, but by turning our thoughts inward to the temple within where the consciousness of God is always ready to respond and give help. I'm going to read that again. The Rosicrucian realizes that at any moment, 
at any time of day, we can turn our thoughts inward and immediately contact the mind and consciousness of God. At any time of day, we can turn our thoughts inward and immediately contact the mind and consciousness of God. What more is there to add? What more is there to do? What more is there needed? And he continued, God is not reached by turning our thoughts outward to some point in the heavens, but by turning our thoughts inward to the temple within, where the consciousness of God is always ready to respond and give help. So I want to close again, uh, I'll close uh, with a brief meditation. Uh, and again, uh, this is aimed at becoming aware and we'll call it again, this is I am exercise. So we're going to ask you to do is to, again, look at the image before you. This is a kind of an eyes open exercise. And repeat the phrase to yourself, I am. I'll repeat it out loud, whatever, uh, but it shouldn't be distracting how you do it. But you want it to dominate your consciousness and dominate your thought. It's be the sole thing is to be aware that you exist. That cogito ergo sum, that I am being, you exist. Then keeping in mind, we have this connection to the deity, right? To the source of our being. So we are not alone, right? We are part of that being, we're part of that existence. Let us see through this and remind ourselves through this that we exist. That we know nothing absolutely, but that we exist. Kajito ergo sum. To be sure that this existence is part of being. And when we turn our consciousness inward, we close our eyes and turn our consciousness inward. We can connect with that source of our being. It is always there at all times for us to access at any time, any place. And it really is our heritage. It's our inheritance. So mode it be.